It's going to be a doozy today. We're, we're both products, Todd. Did you know that? I am not a number. I am a real man. I am a free man. All right. I mean a free man. You're right. Uh, let's do this. You ready? I am as ready as I'm likely to become. Well, that's just going to have to be good enough. <laughs> I want to be good enough. You like me. You really? I do it. This is Siri. The Daily Tech News Show by Tom Merritt is brought to you by all of the supporters at Patreon. If you also want to support Tom, go to patreon.com slash acedetect. That is patreon.com slash acedetect. And thanks as always for listening to The Daily Tech News Show. This is The Daily Tech News for Monday, September 29th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today from ALF, the Geek Radio, Mr. Todd Whitehead. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Todd Whitehead. Hey, how's your world? Uh, my world is round, and uh, I believe its curvature of space is nearly flat, although we're still waiting for some more uh, EMB measurements to confirm that. That does depend on your point of view, but moving on. Yeah, everything's relative, right? Uh, good to have you. We're going to talk about all kinds of interesting stuff today, including whether we are products in this world of Facebook slash LO. Hello, Hello, love, governor. Uh, but also, we've got uh, we've got some interesting voicemails to get to on uh, on iPhone materials and messenger apps. But let's start with the headlines. Facebook announced it's relaunching its Atlas ad platform with a new interface and the ability to track people across devices and even bridge the gap between an online ad impression and an offline purchase. TechCrunch reports Facebook is quick to remind us that Atlas is not an ad network, but is meant to measure and verify ad impressions. Facebook calls it people-based marketing, because that sounds friendly. Although it also assures us that the data is encrypted and not associated with individual peoples. Uh, so they in no way have little private dossiers about every single thing you've ever done in your life. Not at all. Don't even just stop thinking that. We're going to wipe that thought from your brain. The Verge reports Cloudfare deployed Universal SSL, offering free SSL encryption to any site that opts in, including customers of Cloudflare's free service. Cloudflare says yesterday there were about 2 million sites active on the Internet that supported encrypted connections. By the end of today, we will have doubled that. As long as they all opt in. Now, this is really good, though. Um, I actually went and explored to make sure my Cloudflare thing it was in line for this. I guess they're rolling out the paid people first and then the free people after that. But this is great. Money first. The New York Times reports that all those folks waiting in line to buy iPhones so they could resell them in China may not have paid off as much as some may have hoped. The iPhone 6 and 6 Plus have not been approved for official sale in China yet, so there's this gray market where you can buy it. And the Times tells anecdotes of falling prices on those gray market iPhones, one wholesaler complaining they have way too many iPhone 6s in stock. MacRumors reports a leaked internal memo indicates the iPhone may be approved for sale in China soon, hitting stores October 7th and going on sale in China October 10th. You know, I just see this as a maturing customer base in China who knows all I need to do is wait a couple of weeks and I'll be able to get it legit for way less money and why pay the gray market price when it, all I need is a little patience. Well, I think you're right about that. I think that is a factor. And then Xiaomi and Meizu uh, are very popular phones that are often compared to iPhones. And I think a lot of those mature people may go, well, I can just spend less money on a, a Xiaomi or a Meizu phone. Like, why should I Why should I even bother with these $1,000 phones? CNET reports that Microsoft will open a flagship retail store in New York City on Fifth Avenue, Get right. replacing a Fendi store. Uh, offensive or Fendi? No. No, no, purse, purse store, Fendi purses. <laughs> I'm offended by purses, okay? Fair it's enough. I respect your right to be offended. <laughs> back when Microsoft launched the original Surface back in 2012, the company opened a pop-up store in Times Square, and they do have some retail stores in the New York area, but this is their first permanent Manhattan location. No word on an opening date yet. Merely walking distance from the nearby Apple store. Aha. Uh -huh. Ars Technica reports that Adobe is finally bringing Photoshop to Chromebook as part of Creative Cloud. As such, the app will be accessed remotely, not stored locally, and be streamed, a streaming version of 
Photoshop will run in a virtualized environment. It will not have GPU support at launch, though. The network requirements are listed as 5 megabits per second, max latency 250. And right now the program is in beta, so it's only available to U.S. education customers who also subscribe to Adobe's Creative Cloud. Lenovo announced it will officially close its acquisition of IBM's x86 server business on October 1st. CNET reports that will make Lenovo the third largest seller in the x86 server market. IBM will continue to provide maintenance support on the servers for a, for a certain extended period of time. Uh, so so went the ThinkPad, so goeth the server business. Yeah, Lenovo is just eating the little bits of IBM that IBM gets tired of. I mean, IBM's doing fine with their, their, their cloud services and solutions management and Big Iron and all the other areas that I'm not remembering right now that they're in. Uh, and they just keep shedding these other more consumer-oriented parts to the more nimble, I guess, Lenovo. Uh, this is kind of good news for everybody, really. If you're Lenovo, it's good news because you become more, uh, you, you become bigger. It's going to be a cash machine for them, and and it's the kind of thing that you want to be in and are excited to be in versus like an HP or an IBM where you're struggling to make it work, right? And now the server business, you can you can build those network surveillance hardware secret chips right in at the factory. It's so much easier. Well, and being based in dual headquarters in the United States and China, they have the two biggest markets for that. <laughs> Not an accident. <laughs> it's part. It's perfect. Uh, speaking of, of China and surveillance, FireChat has become a popular tool for sharing information among students demonstrating in Hong Kong. The app allows communication in a mesh network using Bluetooth and Apple's multi-peer connectivity framework that when the cell data or the Wi-Fi don't work. Tech in Asia reports student activist leader Joshua Wong posted a message urging people to download FireChat in anticipation of poor cellular network connectivity, and it has taken off uh, like fire chatting. Uh, the, the, uh, there's a lot of debate about how useful the information being sent over fire chat is. Uh, it's, not as, it's not as mature of a platform, say, as Twitter, but it's working. It's working really well. The underlying technology of this is what excites me. I'm, I'm waiting for the first application that brings it into the public's uh, sphere of noticing things. Because a mesh network with mobile devices is a potentially an incredibly powerful thing. Imagine the times we're at large conventions and the cellular service is useless, the Wi-Fi is useless. Using a mesh network of our own devices, we could stay in touch with each other much more easily. We just need to teach people that the functionality is in a lot of their devices already. We're just not utilizing it. It's not turnkey enough for everyone. And but, this is one of those events that can help popularize it. Right. Uh, but it's not. But people who think of it as like, well, I'm not in a protest. You know what I'm going to use it for. The fire chat people actually develop it for big events, for things like sporting events and and conferences where the networks get overloaded. So yeah, and I love the the potential. You have one person who is in range of a good Wi-Fi hotspot. They can be the gateway to the internet for everybody else in the area. Everyone talks to everyone, then just passes it off to the internet. It's a wonderful portable personal cellular network. I just I'd love to see it used at all, really, other than these few few things we've seen. Uh, Jenny, our producer, points out a uh, great for uh, earthquakes, uh, yes. tornadoes, hurricanes, disaster scenarios. Yep. Uh, so something like that comes along. That may be a situation where people uh, end up using it and it, and it gets some gets propelled huge. more into the mainstream. Actually, there have been some mesh networks, not fire chat, but there have been some mesh networks set up uh, in, in the post-Sandy, uh, post-Katrina mm -hmm. situations even as far back as that. And, uh, and, and it's definitely spurred development of that forward. Yep. Time now for some news from you. Uh, these are submitted at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. If you haven't popped by there, it's fun just to look at, to see what the audience is into. Uh, it tells me some things that are uh, of more interest than maybe I thought, some things that may be getting overlooked by the mainstream press that our audience is into. So get in there and if you don't even submit URLs, you can just vote on the things that other people have submitted, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Go Wing DMC passed along a 9 to 5 Mac report that Apple has removed an app called Launcher from its app store for, quote, misuse of widgets. Sad. In the first degree. Don't misuse your widgets. Uh, the app allowed users to create custom shortcuts to apps from Notification Center. Users who already upgraded to the Pro version of the app through an in-app purchase will still be able to keep the Pro capabilities, uh, but no one else will be able to purchase the upgrade going forward. It's the same old thing. If you've already bought it, you get to keep using it. Apple said there is no chance that Launcher will be allowed back in the store with the widget functionality still in place. So remember, treat your widgets with kindness and respect, people.
And obey the rules. <laughs> yeah, and Apple says obey the rules. Uh, Habitrella Condolce pointed out the Ars Technica article on research out at the University of Central Florida that indicated Google Glass is no safer than phones for texting while driving. However, Glass users did regain control of their vehicles faster than phone users following traffic incidents. This adds to other studies that generally show the distraction of texting or calls is the danger, not the form factor of the device upon which they are accessed. Uh, distraction is a distraction is a distraction. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm all for telling people they shouldn't talk on the phone or text while driving. I think it's silly to have a hands-free law. I don't think that makes you any safer. It's the distraction of trying to think about a conversation where the person isn't there. It se seems weird. People are like, well, what's the difference if they're there or not? Well, you know, what if it's a person in the back seat? You're not looking at them. It, there's been ten, tons of studies that show that when the person is not physically present and it's not possible for you to look at them, your brain thinks about the conversation differently because it knows it can't get verbal cues. Uh, and that is a bigger load on your brain. Same thing goes with text messaging. When you're trying to compose and write and read, it takes a part of your brain away, whether it's right in front of your face or not. I do think it makes sense that you would respond to an incident faster because you're already facing forward. So yes. that's where the hands-free part of it does make sense a little. Digs a lot submitted the BGR report that Microsoft may make Windows 9 free at least for some customers. Among the many reports on this, Indonesian online publication Detik said earlier this week that president of Microsoft Indonesia, Andreas Dianatro, said Windows 9 would be free to existing Windows 8 users. Microsoft has an announcement about Windows scheduled for tomorrow, September 30th, so we may find this out tomorrow. Yeah, that would be an interesting move on their part. I mean, the... The most telling thing about Windows 8 was when I read the reports of on, on the Microsoft campus, it was referred to as Vista 2.0. So not held in the highest regard, or not felt as their, as their shiniest, most successful release ever. Um, if they were to you know, give us the gesture of, we're very sorry, here's, here's one that's more like Windows 7, like you wanted at launch of 8 for free, that would be a wonderful PR move. Uh, the the pre-reviews, the, the release videos of the pre-release videos I've seen of Windows 9 look very nice and very much like a return to mouse and keyboard form for them. Um, you know, I can get it for free. Double awesome. Yeah, I I think this this is going to be very telling how they put out this announcement because some of the stuff I read said, well, what they really ought to do is give out Windows 9 for free to XP users because those are the ones <laughs> that they really need to get off the platform, right? Uh, that would be funny if they're like, Windows 9 is free as long as you have XP, Vista, or 9. Windows 7 users, you have a good product, so you have to pay <laughs> <laughs> to upgrade. Uh, I don't think they'll do that, but I do think it could, if they say Windows 9 is free for everybody, you got a Windows installation already? You get Windows 9 for free. If you don't have a Windows installation, you will have to, to pay for it. It would be pointing towards this idea that Satya Nadella is trying to wean Microsoft off of Windows as their main moneymaker and, and push things like Office, push services, things like Skype uh, as the way that they would monetize in the future because they wouldn't be giving it free to enterprise. I'm sure the enterprise level, if you're going to have more than, than, than a family installation, right. they're still going to charge you a licensing fee. Yeah, it's a weird parallel to the gaming industry where uh, it's like the the MMO maker is going to the free to play model, and so Microsoft's going to you know take their MMO, their flagship product, give that away, and make money up on all the things you do inside of it. Yeah, we're you know we're going to start buying little hats that can go on our heads in Skype and uh, your genius and stickers. <laughs> and that's a look at the headlines. All right, so we mentioned a little bit about Facebook uh, relaunching Atlas. They bought Atlas from Microsoft, actually, back in 2013. It measures and verifies ad impressions. The way it does some of the cooler stuff in this relaunch is what's interesting. Facebook's saying cookies aren't good enough anymore. It's not about setting cookies and tracking cookies, uh, because if you're on the mobile platform, cookies don't work. Uh, and you want to be able to track people in apps, in a, in a browser, etc. We can do that. Now, they don't say how. Wall Street Journal reported that the platform will be linking users' ad interactions to their Facebook accounts. My guess is there are so many apps and websites that ask you or allow you to log in with Facebook that Facebook would be leveraging that somehow. So it wouldn't be 100%. Uh, if you're not logged into Facebook, they wouldn't be able to track you, would be my guess. Even more interesting here is the idea that I can 
Let's say I'm a Safeway customer or a Ralph's or Kroger, any of these grocery stores, uh, and I have a loyalty card, right? And I've given them my correct email address. Well, now the grocery store wants to buy some ads on Facebook, can give an encrypted version of that list to Facebook through, or actually to Atlas and say, let us know if anybody on this list sees our ad and then we can compare if they end up spending more than the people who never did see the ad. And that gives them some feedback on whether their ad worked or not. And, and that level of interconnectedness between what we picture in our heads as disparate parts of our lives is exactly what freaks out privacy advocates. Yeah. When things you don't ex pe units you don't expect to be communicating with each other are suddenly on a first name basis. Now, Facebook is quick, to, hastens to add that they don't associate this stuff with accounts. These are encrypted lists that are just compared to each other for the raw data, and then that raw data is spit out. They don't, they are not maintaining a file on individual people. They, they are maintaining a file on individual people with, anonymously. So you get assigned an, an identifying number, because without there being an identity to form a, you know, a, a a data to, field to around, yeah. right, then it's not, this is not useful data. So you need to be able to say, okay, XQ3592 loves to go to Bass Pro Shops and loves to buy Bass Boats and his preferred bait. You, know, you build the, the profile of a number rather than a person. The thing they promise not to do is ever put your real name on that profile. But the profile is definitely out there and totally exists, and it is you and your habits as they have tracked you the bit that they hold, hold back on is actually stamping it with your name. Right, and that is a, a concern in and of itself because A, you're trusting the company to, to keep that stuff anonymous. B, there have been plenty of studies going back to that famous AOL study several years ago that show it's still possible to make a very good guess on who someone is, even if none of their personally identifying information is available, just based on this kind of behavioral mm -hmm. information that is uh, th that is collected here. So on the other side of this, we have Ello continuing to grab headlines. Uh, if you if you haven't heard of it yet, we've mentioned it a couple times on the show. E L L O dot C O. It's an invite only social network right now, and the. The big thing about it is they promise never to sell ads, that you are not a product. They say that right up front. Uh, if they make money, they're gonna make money selling small features. So they use as examples, I wanna manage multiple accounts with one login. Maybe I pay a couple bucks for that. I want emoji packs uh, designed by Shepard Ferry or something like, yeah, you, you pay a little extra for that. Um, I think if you don't have to have an office building full of people figuring out how to manipulate people into giving you more data, it's really not that hard to run a network with a ton of people on it, <laughs> says CEO Budnitz about LO. Basically like, look, you got to have all these people at Facebook because you got to figure out how to tweak the business model all the time uh, to, to track these ads and get people to do things that will collect data that you can then uh, sell to, to marketers. If you don't have to do that, you don't need all those people. It's an interesting place to be because I found myself in the recent past looking at some wonderful open source projects that you can get to build your own Facebook lookalike and run it yourself, have a private network of your own social network of your own friends, and with the idea of building that and, and opening up to our listener community of all the different networks that work together and just kind of build our own private little Facebook with no ads, no trolls, and I mentally just kind of always stop short of opening it up because everybody's on Facebook. They're used to Facebook. It was a huge cultural shift to get people using Facebook. And I'm not confident I could get buy-in from people who are like, well, no, I can just see these. They can see these same people on Facebook. It's already easy to find these. So I need another account on another service. The getting over the inertia of, well, I'm already doing it this way and it's mostly satisfying my need to communicate with my friends and my communities without, and yeah, yeah the ads are kind of annoying, but the annoyance factor hasn't overshadowed the convenience factor yet. So anyone, LO, trying to come in and take a piece of, I mean, look at Google+, Plus always trying to you know come in and take a piece of Facebook's pie. It's a it's a hard road to hoe to get the, over that inertia of well it's, I've already got the app on my device and all my friends are here. How do you break that? 
Diaspora tried to do it. Yep. Identica tried to do it. I played with Elg. App.net tried to do it. Uh, lots of people have tried to do it. What's interesting is up until Facebook, it was the norm, that was the pattern that you'll have a Friendster rise, everyone will go there, they'll get tired of it, they'll move on to MySpace, and then MySpace will rise and everyone will go there and they'll move on to Facebook, and Facebook put an end to that. And now the conventional wisdom is, well, everybody's on Facebook, why would you want to leave? It takes a compelling premise to get people to leave. It makes What happened with Friendster, MySpace, and Facebook was not enough people were there yet so when a compelling premise of whether it was music or whether it was like a better network came along, people were willing to try it out. Now there's inertia. So it's gonna, in my opinion, I'm saying it's gonna take a bigger deal to move people over. Yeah. What's interesting about Ello is I am seeing all of the people that I would like to see move over. Diaspora, I didn't see that. App.net, mm -hmm. I didn't see that. I'm seeing the same people that back in the day were trying out Plurk, were trying out Pounce, were willing to give a flyer on a new social network. And I think it's because of that premise of we won't track you. Uh, yeah. People are very concerned about that. On the other well, hand, getting tracked isn't such a bad thing. There's some benefits to it. If Facebook is not going to like build a secret dossier on you and do evil things, what they're really trying to do is say, we honestly just want to give you ads that are relevant to you. You want to, we want to give you things that you won't mind seeing because you want to know about them. You want to view them and you want to purchase them. And in that respect, I, I get the Facebook argument, which is like, who knows you better than us <laughs> for, for marketing purposes? Wouldn't you like us providing the data mm -hmm. to people? The, the arguments against you know, the, the data gathering and the data mining are always tremendous potential for misuse. Until there is that headline of, here is Facebook, we caught them abusing the stuff they said they would not abuse, I don't think there will be a shift because people won't feel that there's anything wrong. This is a wonderful service and it's free. Yes, I'm used to being advertised to. I grew up in the television age. Advertisements interrupting my enjoyment are not a new thing. And they actually are less intrusive, even though, but they're getting very good at making them as intrusive as old television commercials used to be. Autoplay, damn you. Um, well, I Google announced a new ad format, full page text. So it's like a magazine ad scrolls down on your mobile device, takes over your screen. I'm just gonna nip off and shoot myself. Um, but until until Brain there the is the size of a planet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I could count on you. The um, until there is a major data breach or a major evidence of them using it in a way that really offends people's sensibilities, I don't think people are gonna want to move away from Facebook. They may become bored with it, but they're not gonna move away in droves because of some big problem with their data being stolen or their data being used or personal private you know personal precious bodily fluids being used in the wrong way yeah facebook's weathered several of these mini controversies right there was no smoking gun like they've done something absolutely horrible and unforgivable or illegal right and they've even done some things that have been found semi-illegal and they've had to agree to ftc monitoring and stuff like that but nothing that has done more than caused a temporary amount of internet outrage and all that's done is teach facebook to be more careful about how they roll these things out uh i this is the revival of a platform that they wanted to roll out before and i think they were just very careful how they did it i think that they can navigate these waters fairly clean if if they do it right but i do think that people are getting tired of being marketed to and i think that lo has has eyes on it that it wouldn't have had a couple of years ago, thanks to Snowden and just years of mm -hmm. seeing these kinds of privacy stories in other areas. So the question is, can they can they convert on that, right? Can they bring the people in and then keep them by providing them something else that makes them say, oh, well, I came for the not tracking, but I stayed for the X, and I don't know right. what that X is. What is the X? Other than right now, the X can be, I stayed because what you said earlier, all the people I'm interested in hanging out with are here. Right. And the and to, in today's world, my next question to you is, do they have a good app on all the platforms you want it on? Right. And right now they're just in browser-based, which I almost think is the smartest thing to do because they're like, we are just browser-based. So you don't have any expectation that they will be anywhere else yet. Mm -hmm. And eventually their monetization plan would, to me, say, yeah, we'll have an app. 
it'll be 99 cents, right? We're not going to, we're not going to come out here like Twitter with an open API that we then take away from people. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to monetize the pieces of this. That may get annoying to people down the road though. We'll have to see. Yep. Interesting. Uh, speaking of ends of eras, we're kind of talking about the beginning of a new era there, possibly. The calendar shows us that tomorrow, September 30th, is the last day a TechNet subscription will be active. TechNet for many years has been a way for people to get lots of software for cheap from Microsoft. Uh, tomorrow is also the last day for Orkut. Speaking of social networks yep. being phased out, goodbye, Orkut. Even in Brazil, it's not as popular as it used to be. Uh, it's a social media site owned by Google, if you didn't know. Everybody's being directed over to Google+. Plus. Please exit the Orkut safely <laughs> through the, the nearest exit. Uh, Microsoft is also having an event, as I mentioned, tomorrow in San Francisco. And I believe that, uh, and everybody else believes that we will hear a Windows 9. Whether it's called Windows 9 or not uh, is, is actually the big question. Our pick of the day comes from Dave Popovich of Stewart, Florida, who wanted to share a product that saved him lots of medical bills because he's a network administrator for 500 users in nine locations and spends a lot of time at his computer using his mouse. That meant I would drive home after work and massage my right forearm because of the dull ache of carpal tunnel. I don't remember how I discovered this product, but it has really made a difference. The Evoluent Vertical Mouse. Been using the regular size right-handed wired version for years now at home and at work and have no more wrist pain. Works by turning your hand 90 degrees so you rest your arm on the outside bones and not the soft tissue of the inside arm. They also make smaller mice and left-handed mice. Only caveats, with years of training to use a mouse one way, you are a bit less accurate at first using a vertical mouse. It just takes a little practice. Also, the mouse has lots of extra buttons, which I found got in the way, but just go in the driver and set those trouble buttons to not do anything and it doesn't end up being a problem. Uh, he says, it really has changed my life and many vendors and computer service folks are very interested when they see it on my desk. Evoluance been around for a long time. I know a lot of people who swear by this. I could never get myself to switch. I tried it once or twice. Have you ever used a vertical mouse, Todd? No, I am uh, a fogey of the old style. I, I old and set in my ways. I've tried some of the uh, 3D mice you hold up in the air with accelerometers and things, and it just has not. I've never had a problem with repetitive stress, so I've never felt. You the just need enjoy to... repetitive stress. You don't have a problem with it. I'm just You're talking about something else. Yeah. Uh, Jetty adds that the mouse also has Bluetooth, works with Windows and Apple computers, has more limited functionality on Unix, Linux, and VMware, but it does work with those as well. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. All right, we got two voicemails today uh, for our messages, and the first one comes from Chris. He has a quick idea on why Facebook might have separated out Messenger. Let's take a listen. Hi, Tom. I've just realized the reason for separating Messenger from Facebook in mobile applications. I'm just about to turn off Facebook notifications on my mobile device. However, I want to keep my Messenger notifications on. I get too many Facebook notifications and they're not important enough to keep them on. Um, thanks for the show. Aussie Chris, Melbourne, Australia. What do you think of that, Todd? Uh... It, it may, gives you a little... I, I almost feel like this is an accidental uh, benefit of this, but what do you think? It, I mean, it, it's certainly convenient and rings true. I doubt they would have gone to all that trouble unless their usage metrics were telling them a story of, okay, the very first thing people do after installing our app is turn off all the push notifications, rendering our ability to get their attention useless. Um, I've had a hard time wrapping my head around the, the possible whys of this split of Messenger. I was annoyed every single time I was prompted to install it across many devices that I use because I'm a big fat nerd, and I, just, I didn't. I don't still don't get it because it's not really a Messenger I use all that much. So now, great, I've got something taking up extra space on a device for something I don't care about. Um, this that doesn't feel like quite enough to motivate them to to build a whole new app to support. No, I, I think there are other reasons, and I, and I think it has to do with diversification, uh, you know, wanting to, to at least get people who want to use Messenger into the ecosystem without making them use everything else, just making it cleaner. But Chris, you definitely hit on a benefit of doing it that way because it, it can give you a little more fine-tuned control over it. Our other voicemail comes from Linda. She has a theory. It's theory day. People have got good theories. Uh, she has a theory on why Apple might have chosen aluminum for the back of the iPhone. 
Hey, Tom. Linda from San Jose here. Just wanted to mention uh, in response to your conversation yesterday about the materials that Apple uses when they make the iPhone, one reason they may choose not to use plastic is because it's recyclable, or because or it'll be less recyclable than metal. I am guessing. I am not even in the same universe as an ecologist scientist, but I thought that was a thought. Take care. Bye bye. All right. So that could be a concern is to say, well, we're going to choose this, this case material because it's greener. Apple is definitely trying to win points on their environmental support, right? Every, every time a report card comes out, Apple makes a big deal of how much it improved, if it improved. Is aluminum going to be the better choice than plastic there? I couldn't find anything definitive on this. It does seem that all, all the report cards are much more concerned with the toxic chemicals that make up the chips and the boards and things like that than they are with the case material. Yeah, there's there's nasty heavy metals and stuff in there, but you consider plastic is a petroleum product, and aluminum the bauxite is really easy to get out of the ground. That's one of the reasons we love aluminum so much is it's it's not deep underground. We don't, not a lot of refinement required. It's a fantastic material, so it may just have been with when they added up the list of okay, yes, it's it's greener. We're not supporting pulling more petroleum out of the ground. Oh, yeah, and it's wicked cheaper, too. Um, that yeah, because they could have gone with recycled plastics, things like, you know, I've seen lots of phones with uh, cases that are made out of old tires and, and stuff like that, but that's actually a more expensive material, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men, what went into this one, um, may, may have been to satisfy users' expectations. Many of the most popular Android phones have that aluminum back to them, or at least an aluminum looking back. So you have, you have magnesium versions and all mm -hmm. the different ones. So it may have just been, let's join the crowd. We're, we're joining them with the 5.5 inches. We've got near field communications, even though you're not allowed to use it. And <laughs> let's look like what a 5.5 inch phone is expected to look like. Now you're going to get a lot of Apple people going, Apple doesn't join the crowd. They design what they think is right. And that's a whole separate conversation. But I think you're probably on to something, which Apple definitely is more concerned about the design and look of their phones. And the uh, 6 Plus looks gorgeous. If the case were, if I had been able to find evidence the case were more important in these environmental ratings, I think Linda would be on to something. It doesn't seem like the case is as important. But if anybody out there knows how these ratings are put together, uh, send, us a, send us a note. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. It would be good to know. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Todd Whitehead. AlphaGeekRadio.com. If you want to uh, listen to not only Daily Tech News Show when it's live, but reruns of it, as well as loads of other Amazing shows. You got three channels full of good stuff. Oh yeah, listeners, are you a nerd? Now, come on, you're listening to Daily Tech News Show. I know you're a nerd. Uh, come on over to alphageekradio.com. Click on the shows tab. We have stuff for everybody with an ever-growing list of shows, and we just want to spread the good word, share the love. Come tune in, listen to what's on the stream. Click on their link, go to their page, download their stuff, and spread the good nerd word. And thank you to 4,304 patrons uh, who have helped us spread a little bit of that nerd word. Uh, we appreciate every single bit of support. Uh, I, I think the 4,300th patron was the one who emailed. It was like, I did it. I'm 4,300, which is fantastic. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you to everybody who supports us, whether it's on Patreon or whether it's on PayPal or Dogecoin or Bitcoin, all the ways to help the show, our dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate. Don't forget, you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. 512-59 daily. That's 512-593-2459. And listen to the show live at mobile.alphageekradio.com or on TuneIn Radio or just on alphageekradio.com. Our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with Molly Wood and Patrick Beja. See you then. Yeah.
Hey -oh. Quality merchandise, people. Quality merchandise. Merchandising. Merchandising. That's Hello, where the real money in the movie is made. <laughs> Uh, good titles today. Good titles. Oh, yeah? Let's yeah. Let's take a look. Quality. Let's take a look. Or if you Hello, live in New York. Hello, it's me. Um, Ooh. Uh, I like there's always room for Ello. <laughs> 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 uh, I like that, I really that like too. that. <laughs> That's funny. Uh... But also, I know social networks. I can't do a Bill Cosby to save my life. That's not even close. <laughs> uh, I can think it, but I can't say it. Yeah, um, me too. My Cosby impression is perfect in my head. Give them, give them. Rudy! Do I have two mics? That's. That's a dubious question. No, she has does two turntables. Like does it and sound one like microphone. I have two mics? I don't know. Well, if you don't hear it, then. No. Um, mm. All right. So the other ones, I, I really think it's there's always room for Ello, but I also must recognize I am a product. <laughs> um, Facebook shrugged. Uh, <laughs> which I is get it. Good. And ran joke. Yay. Yep. That, that is a qualifying factor. Um, Mesh Network toe hold. And then, hello, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you say hello, and I, I say, say goodbye. goodbye. And uh, I also like, oh, this podcast will now cost you $8 million. <laughs> 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 and also, I do like, I have to recognize Atlas Bugged, which is ah, nice. Mm. That is pretty great. So um, a lot of, oh, and personal favorite of mine, we didn't like the fire chat. Um, Hello, is it me you're looking for? Is damned clever as well. Yeah. Hello, uh, and also correct because searching stuff on Hello is, it is me still very you're looking dubious. for. Yes, that is true. Oh, so it was what my microphone looks like is the Pop screen. issue at hand. Um, well, when we reach our twenty thousand dollar Patreon goal and go to an official video feed, I will address. That. <laughs> we got those pop screens, you know you. I uh, know it's just a it's a pop filter. Yes, if you have a pop filter in front of a, a wind filter over your microphone. You're practicing I, microphone. I, I'm a I'm a pee popper. I pop peas. You pop the peas. I, I pop, pop the peas. Pop your peas and tip your teas and yeah. Clip your and keys. A wind filter, uh, to knock out the fan above my head. So there you go. Fans yeah. above. And pay no attention to the closet behind that curtain. <laughs> the curtain in front of that closet? <laughs> the curtain in front of that closet. I'm in a closet, so there you go. That is a literal closet, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's impressive. It works very well. as uh, I, need, I need to do some remodeling to make it even more so, but as, as a recording space and space when my wife needs to be on her conference call in the main office right. and I need to be in my conference call in here, it works great. How long has that been your setup? Uh, it's probably like five, six months now. And how far into it did you get tired of closet jokes? <laughs> I don't generally let people know that it is this way, so I've avoided it up until the moment you started it. That's good. I, <laughs> no, I'm trying. I'm actually avoiding it. but I'm And just... I hate you. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to come out of the closet now. Yes, that's yeah. I figured those I, had already been made after five no, or six months. I just don't. I don't talk about my closet activity publicly <laughs> usually. It's okay, Todd. Oh crap! We're still you streaming, aren't we? You can talk about it. It's fine. It's perfectly natural. What am I looking at here? Are you seeking purpose? No, I, I'm. I, I'm looking at something that looks like. Oh, that is terrifying. It's a <laughs> it's a picture of Brian with the spiky hair. Oh. Yeah, that used to be the normal. It used to be terrifying when he had his hair down. Everybody's like, whoa, who's that? <laughs> so no, funny. It's, but it goes along with the words, hello, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> 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 with a with a Schwid photo bomb, huh? That, yeah. that works. No, there was uh last time I was in Vegas, uh on the inside advertising space of the elevator, they had a local 
magician, ironically, who was doing the same super spiked blonde hair as Schwed. Oh, made really? Sure, made sure to take a photo and put that out and say, hey, Schwed, it's good to know your hair has a recurring gig in Vegas. <laughs> um, and he quietly seethed to himself. Yes, I, he did kind of give me this. this Ooh, thing Mistobox I finally came through with the 20% off on all coffee today. In have as in, in a celebration of Coffee Day. Coffee Day. Uh, so use the code Best Day. I don't get anything from that code, by the way, but I just got it on email, and you get twenty percent off. Coffee Day is Best Day. That is not an advertisement. Mm-hmm. That is just me passing along an email. Hooray! <laughs> dog catcher people, you won't hear this because you listen to the show on Dog Catcher, but. <laughs> I just got the RSS feed URL approved by SoundCloud. So that will solve an issue that we were having with Dog Catcher. Excellent. Yay. 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 <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What? Well, it says it says that I have it, but it hasn't showed up yet. <laughs> Lies. It's oh, one of those lies. one of those things. They're <laughs> like, if you don't see it, try logging out and logging back in, which I did. Did you turn it off and on again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? My favorite bits from that. Which is not, yeah, that's not Moss or Roy. Yeah, but with Moss, do you see the, the, see the episode where Moss was help, helping the bomb squad with their robot? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. We can fix it. What operating system is it running? Uh, Vista. We're all going to die. die. We're all going to die. <laughs> My God, that's so true. Why would you put Vista on your bomb robot? I gotta go rewatch all of those. That that entire series is amazing. It does not get old. It is so. It is such a wonderful continuation into my adult life of like the young ones. Same kind of sensibilities, without being quite as haphazardly acid trippy based. Well, uh, did you ever watch Father Ted? Only in passing. I watched it after I w- had been uh, introduced to the it crowd, or IT crowd, as some people say. They're both right. Uh, and I can see why, like, at the time, Father Ted would have been the most hilarious thing ever. Mm-hmm. But after seeing IT crowd, I'm like, yeah, this is, I would be as excited about Father Ted if I was a priest <laughs> <laughs> as I am about IT crowd because yep. I'm into technology. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you like technology, Tom? Eh, it's okay. Yeah. Sometimes I don't like it very much at all. <laughs> it's only like the the gravity well around which you orbit. Yeah. Sometimes it orbits me. Mm. I mean, it sends me into orbit. That's what I mean. Slingshot. Gravitational slingshot. Um. Oh. So did we decide what our title was? We did, well, and okay. by we, I only mean me, but yeah, I decided and- there's always room for Ello, uh, yeah. and if anyone has a problem, speak now before I upload, because it's my last chance to change the ID3 no, tag. that's the one. Yeah. It was close, though. I started to lean toward Ello, is it me you're looking for there for a second, because mm-hmm. they're both good. Mm-hmm. They both work two ways, which is good. Exactly. That's, we that's have the best title, kind of title served two ways for you today. Oh, say so we're going with like I don't know why you say Facebook. I say hello. <laughs> hmm. It was good. Though. The other one I liked in there was the hello, hello, goodbye, yeah. orchid. Hello, hello, goodbye, orchid. Poor orchid. I really liked it for a month or two. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's, that's I went. Mu- what? I went in uh, right before, well, right after they announced that they were going to wind it down, and I I took a, a look at my fans of Turn Signals group that I had been a part of one last time. <laughs> it was this, the uh, the group picture. I had forgotten this till I looked at it. Was a guy in a car doing the left turn signal but making a gesture with his finger. <laughs> That's not the Boy Scout salute. <laughs> oh, jeez, TVZ gone. It's too late. Don't piss him off, man. He can drive over here and kick my ass. <laughs> they call me Mellow Ello. <laughs> Quite right, Slick. 
<laughs> Man. Include an RSS good. feed. Wait, enable downloads doesn't include it in the RSS feed. That's really odd. Maybe one's for direct like, FTP. Link. You can include, I, I guess what I mean to say is you can include it in the RSS feed without making it downloadable. <laughs> Those are two different and independent. Uh, so it would, it would grab just the description and no download link? That's no, I think, it would, I think it would work. It's just not going to give you a download link on the SoundCloud. Gotcha. Oh, you're experimenting with the uh, SoundCloud podcast support? Yeah. How's that going? Well, it's been going great. I've been using it to host the files lately. Um, and the only problem was with the dog catcher folks because there was just no way to convince dog catcher before I got the RSS feed turned on that my little URL hack wasn't the same file every day. Hmm. Um, it wouldn't update then. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I was trying things like putting wild cards after a question mark and things like that. And to varying degrees, but I was waiting for the RSS feed from SoundCloud to get approved so that I could get the actual URL um, to the actual file. Excellent. And then dog catcher should be fine. Dog catcher is finicky, man. Mm -hmm. It's catching dogs. XML in general, there's, there's so many un... Spoken mm -hmm. forks and subtle changes and enhancements. To yeah. the, it's like, why, why do we have standards, people? This is why we can't have nice standards. Well, and this is, that's why I don't want to say Dogcatcher has a problem. I don't think they have a problem. It's, it's that their standards comply it half right. the time that causes the problem. And the fact that nobody else is mm -hmm. means that it works for everybody but them because they're mm -hmm. actually trying to implement things correctly. Yeah. So I, 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 don't, I don't like blaming them. Or singling them out. Just thought we did. Well, I singled them out, but then I tried to make the caveat. <laughs> All right, let's make sure this feed actually works. Yes, it does. It downloads the right file. The file seems to be the entire show. Good, good. All of all of ticking all the boxes here. I'm always it's always a fun thing to see what my import widget makes of your your content uh, oh yeah uh you, you made a change a couple of weeks ago i think in how you're publishing it comes through much more right side up now um i used to get all kinds of html as part of the feed so basically you would have black on black text and so i until i got in there and manually edited it oh god okay in recent recent weeks it's been very nice it's actually even grabbing your dtms logo and bringing it over automatically and white on black text which is a plus I'm gonna get me that Evoluent mouse. I Are think. you? You like it? I could never, I, I could never use it, but I know lots of people who love them. I definitely sense like it would be a challenge, but I think it's a challenge I want to try to overcome because, uh, damn, my wrist hurts all the time because I have that Apple Trackpad mm -hmm. one, and it's just not quite right for. Um, you know, you kind of have to hold your wrist up at a weird angle. So I would give anything to have a mouse that was. Um, less stress on the soft tissue. Challenge accepted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is on my Amazon wish list. So, family, you have been duly notified. Bring it on. All right. Uh, everything is uploaded. Archive video, or no, not video. Archive.org audio uh, with the AUG file happening soon and SoundCloud and... I'm out of the post. Would you like some um, show notes? Yes, please. Would you like a jelly, baby? Would you like a, <laughs> a jelly show note? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, on the videos. Goodbye.